Hi guys, my name is Dory. Today I want to talk to you about what you need to know when you stay in huts. And I've done a previous video about the rules of hiking and hiking etiquette. But this video is specifically for when you're planning to stay in huts or when you want to do a hut to hut hike. So let's dive straight in. The first thing you should know is that these huts are built to be a temporary shelter for you on your hike or when you're passing by. It doesn't mean when you have a shelter somewhere that you can stay there for a week or something like that or you can make it like your campground for the school holidays. No, okay? The huts have a specific purpose and it's not meant for you to be living in it. Even though you will find the odd homeless person here and there. Not only are the huts temporary shelters, but you also need to be prepared for when the huts are full. Most huts have a first come first serve system, which means that, you know, if there's 16 beds in a hut, that means that usually the first 16 people to arrive there will have a spot. That means that a spot in a hut is not guaranteed. Now, if you're like the 17th or 18th person to arrive, you could actually sleep on the floor, okay? And you should always prepare yourself for when the hut is full or when you can't stay in the hut. So I would suggest you always bring some kind of sleeping pad with you or even a tent so you can make use of the designated camping areas if you need to. Sometimes though the hut come with a booking system and that means that you have to book your spot in advance. Definitely always check before you go on a hike whether it is a booking system or a first come first serve basis. A great example of the booking system are the great walks in New Zealand. All right, so I've just explained to you that we always have to come prepared for when the huts are full. It's very important, guys, that you know that you need to share these huts. And if there is 16 beds in a hut, then that means that 16 people will have a spot to sleep on on the platform. Please be mindful of other people, share the huts, make space for people who are coming in because they might be tired or exhausted. And definitely if it gets dark and, you know, there might be other people coming in that had a late start. Just don't go and act like you own the place. Usually when you sleep in huts, there's no electricity. That means that it gets dark at a certain point. And usually when it gets dark, people tend to go to sleep. If you like late nights or whatever, then please be mindful of your fellow hikers and please do not make noise. The same goes for if you are an early bird and you want to leave early. Just think about everyone else around you and just try not to make too much noise. The huts are always going to be a bit noisy, but it makes a big difference if there's one idiot who ruins it for everyone else. If you do know that you're leaving early, maybe try and pack the night before and then you can just get up and go. You know, it'll make it a lot more comfortable for you, but also for others. The same goes for when you're up late at night and you see that, well, half the hut is already sleeping. Well. Would you like to have noise around you when you're trying to sleep? When you want to have an early start? I don't think so. So just keep the noise to a minimum. All right. Another thing I really need to mention in this video is when we go, um, when we stay at huts, it's very important to leave no trace. We should all leave the hut the way we found it, but also leave the hut as you would like to find it. That's like a simple rule. So if, if it is dirty, just clean it up, whatever. But there will always be some cleaning materials available for you in the hut. And if you're the last to leave, then please leave the hut clean and secure. So always check that the windows are closed. You know, you don't want the next person to find it with a lot of mosquitoes inside. Or let me rephrase that. You don't want to be the one coming to a hut and it's full of mosquitoes because the last idiot didn't close the windows. I don't think so. So think about how you want to find the hut and that's how you should leave it behind. Specifically, do not leave any food around because there is a big problem with rats and mice on trail. I've been to many, many huts and a lot of them had a rodent problems. Always leave the huts as you want to find it. And that's probably the easiest way to remember. You know, it doesn't feel comfortable when you go to a hut and it's like, oh, who the hell stayed here? Unfortunately, for a lot of people, that doesn't make sense. If you use some firewood, then please always replace it or replenish the current firewood piles so when someone has an emergency they actually have wood or when someone comes in on a really wet day they don't want to go and look for dry wood because they're not going to find it so please always be mindful for the people that come behind you now with replacing firewood i do not mean that you have to chop down the trees around the hut and just you know leave some green branches in there for a smoky fire no just go and look for a dead tree and just you know 
usually there will be an X or a saw or something like that to cut branches. All right, when talking about firewood, that brings me to the next topic and that is fires. Okay, so sometimes you're not allowed to make a fire and please respect those rules because they're mostly there for a reason and for to prevent bushfires. You should only lit a, light a fire when it's really necessary, if it's been a really wet day, if it's cold or if it's an emergency situation. If you do make a fire, then always use a designated fire pit and always keep your fires small. Also, if you make a fire and you leave the hut, always make sure that the fire is out, but also that the fire is cold. We all have rubbish and if you don't, then good on you because you have to teach me how you do it. Um, if you do have rubbish, just take it with you and um, but one thing not to do is to burn your rubbish because I see a lot of people that want to burn their rubbish and there's nothing wrong with that if it's cardboard or you know if it's a burnable material. <sighs> a lot of people don't know this but when you have those dehydrated meals the material that they use to actually keep the food fresh will not break down in a fire okay so these aluminium uh, looking um, inner layers these do not break down we all want to burn our our rubbish but just just be mindful to what you can and cannot burn and definitely not count on burning your rubbish when you're on trail because you only should light a fire when it's really necessary when it's cold when it's wet when you need to dry your gear and uh, things like that now the plan is or the plan should be to bring all your rubbish with you and don't leave any on the trail Usually when you come in huts, there will be like a clothesline. If not, be creative on how you want to dry your shoes or your clothes, but always re leave some room for someone else. All right, so that doesn't mean that you have to keep the room free, but if someone comes in with wet clothes, then please, you know, what would you want them to do if it was you coming in all rained out? All right, next up, logbooks. Every hut will have a logbook for you to sign in and out. And they're basically there for a reason, okay? They can save your life because if someone is looking for you or, or if you get lost, then people will know when was the last time you signed in. So this is usually the place where you've last been seen and at least they know where to start looking for you. It will make search and rescue operations a lot easier if you sign the book in and out. And this is straightforward guys, but you would be surprised how often you actually forget to sign a book. If you don't know how to use one of those logbooks, you can always check the first page or the front page of the book where it will clearly explain how you need to use the book. Right, the next thing I want to talk about is toilets. Most of the time you will find toilets around the hut and these toilets are usually composting toilets, which means that you always need to close the lid when you leave. Sometimes you will find a brush with some kind of liquid that is there to disinfect the toilet. So just use it before and after you do your business and, um, and then also again close the lid. So that will help the toilet to decompose your business. If there is no toilets, then always, you know, take a walk. Always go at least 50 meters away from the hut and away from water sources to go to the toilet. And if you do your business, always dig a hole. And make sure that your hole is at least 15 centimeters deep and always cover it back up. The next thing I want to talk about is water. Now, depending on the country you're hiking in, most huts will usually have a tap where you can get some water. Whether it's from a water tank, whether it comes from a stream or something like that, you will have some kind of water source around you. If you don't have a tap, then always make sure that you get water from a source that is upstream from the huts. Uh, to get the cleanest water and also one thing you have to remember is always 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 filter your water I've heard stories on the Bibbulmun track which is you know Australia we, we're pu pretty pure and stuff like that but it is rainwater and you never know which brings me to another point never ever use detergent or wash yourself in the water close to the huts because you know come on someone else will drink from this water and we do not want your dirty germs uh, in our water bottle but if you do go for a swim just don't use any of those detergents and um, something i want to mention as well that if you see that there is some damage in one of the huts then always report it to the ranger after your hike or you know when you get back to town something like that because then they can actually repair it and the rangers will always check the huts but it doesn't mean that they're there every day 
So if you do have something to report, it's always a good idea to report it. I hope I didn't forget anything. And honestly, that is that is why I got my nickname, because I forget a lot of things. So if you can think of something else, then please let me know in the comments below. For now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! This might make sound sense. Um, this might not sound... This might not make sense, but a lot of these dehydrated food... <laughs> a lot of these dehydrated food packages... Which brings me to the next point, and this crow is probably gonna start crowing. There we go. Hi! Oh no! First it was the sun, then it's, you know, rain is coming and I didn't bring a rain jacket. And now there's this crow right here. But anyway, always stay positive. Yeah. Alright, so that's what you have to do to scare a crow. <laughs> no worries.